All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Carol Spearling here with the Living in Hawaii show. Have some great guests with me here today. And we're going to be talking about healthcare in Hawaii. But first of all, I'd like to introduce Soraya Letternal. She is uh, a recent transplant here from, I believe, Texas. Soraya, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, absolutely. So I came from Houston, Texas about eight years ago. Uh, so recent, but not that recent. And I used to work in the oil industry before I moved here. And uh, there is none of that here. So I actually became a coffee farmer when I moved to the Big Island. Wow, exciting. Good, good, good. Yeah. And we also have Ronnie Margolis. He is um, a longtime resident of Kauai. Uh, Ronnie, introduce yourself also. Aloha. Uh, happy Aloha Friday as we're recording this. Originally born and raised in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Migrated west in the late 80s to Southern California. Worked in the tech sector, then kept migrating west and came to Kauai in early 2004. Actually honeymooned here in, uh, oh, in 1993 and came back for my 10th anniversary celebration. Entered a new sales field, as it were, in real estate and been able to enjoy an active lifestyle. And we're talking about medical today, so I can share all of my experiences, all the metal parts in my body and so on and so forth. <laughs> oh, Ronnie, thank you. I know as unfortunately, as we age, we all have bits and pieces and parts that weren't there originally, but you know, they're here now. And just to introduce myself, I'm Carol Spearling. Um, I live on the Big Island in Kealakekua, been here since 1988 and been through a lot of different things, different medical providers, different injuries, different services. And so I'll have a lot to share with everybody on that also. But starting out, we are going to be in overall, we're talking about healthcare in Hawaii because we, it's an important topic when you're thinking about moving to Hawaii and thinking about coming over what's available on each island and just kind of knowing what the basics are. So pretty much we start out that Oahu is our base of healthcare. Oahu provides, you know, the Queens Medical Center. There's also Straub and Kaiser, and there's the specialists more so there. But then on each island, we also have medical providers and services and hospitals and everything. And Ronnie, I'm going to let you take it from here and let us know what's available on Kauai and how the, the, everything works there. Okay, uh, happy to do so. Here on Kauai, we have three main hospitals. Uh, the main one is in our town core, the Hue, where our airport is. That's called Wilcox Memorial. And it's a pretty well-staffed hospital. We have a very well-reputed and successful bone and joint center. I can give them a testimony on that. On the North Shore, we have uh, Makana Urgent Care, and that's relatively recent. That's just within the last seven years. So it's a very modern facility with great care, covering uh, a lot of different things. Of course, if you if you have an emergency here and you're on the North Shore, you could be as far as an hour away from the main hospital. There is a hospital on the east side. It's more of an emergency room and senior care and their facilities for aging people with disabilities there as well. That's called Mahalona. And then on the west side, we have the Kauai Veterans Memorial Hospital that, of course, sees all our veterans and has really, really excellent services. We've got several urgent care facilities, one in Poipu, one in Lihue, the one on the North Shore that I mentioned. And what I was thinking about when we were going to talk about this subject is, I think, per capita, the plethora of alternative modalities, acupuncture, chiropractor, energy work, places to get vitamin C drips and all kind of whatever the cutting edge of the natural approach to health is. And I think that coupled with how long we live in Hawaii because we have clean air, beautiful water, and gigantic avocados is kind of the balance to maybe the limitation of resources. And I don't know if you want me to talk about some of the limitations now, or that's another segment of what we're talking about. We'll kind of get into that, but I think that that's great that you brought this up as far as natural 
uh, remedy and options for care above and beyond traditional medicine. And I think on all islands, we have that, um, which is really great. And let's get into that a little bit more into the show, because I think that's a very important thing. But Soraya, right now, I'd kind of like you to kind of point out what we have here on the big island as far as medical facilities. Absolutely. So we have a lot on the big island. We have the Kona Community Hospital, which is in Kealakekua. It's a very nice facility. My husband actually works there, so I'm very familiar with the staff and everything that they have available. There's also one in Kau. There's a hospital down south. So if you do live down south, you do have services. I think that's typically a misunderstanding that people think they have to drive a quite a long way to get any type of care. There's also one in Hilo, and that's the biggest one on the island. It's very large. If you're looking to have any type of big operation or seeing specialists, typically you'll go to that side because they have a lot more available. And there is another one in Waimea as well. There's a hospital in Waimea. Uh, we do have a couple urgent cares throughout the island. Uh, Kona has a couple. I know Waimea does. So you can find those. They're typically eight to five. You know, they're made for those types of emergencies if you don't have time or there's quite a long line to go to the hospital. Um, and just like Ronnie mentioned, we have a lot of alternatives if you're looking for natural solutions to care for your needs. <laughs> so I haven't gone that route but i have experienced acupuncture and to be honest with you it stressed me out more than it relaxed me <laughs> so, i don't like needles <laughs> it was it's definitely something you have to get used to with the needles thing and go in there with just a, a very relaxed mindset but you know there are yeah. a lot of other as well you know massage therapy the acupuncture of course but there's lots i'm going to touch on maui um real quickly unfortunately we don't have a rep from maui here today but i will say that there is maui memorial hospital there in in kahalui and they provide great service there as well as having different urgent cares and other facilities and clinics around the island i think urgent cares they came along and that that was such a blessing to everyone because we go to the ocean and especially here on big island it's all rocks and you cut yourself it's easy to go to urgent care and have that taken care of so urgent cares around the state, I think are very popular, very well used, and they've been a really great resource for everyone that comes here to visit. So moving on, we want to talk a little bit more about our pros and cons of our healthcare system here in Hawaii. Going forward, you know, as I mentioned originally that Oahu has the best overall health care. Uh, we have the Queen's Medical Center there. That is about the largest medical center here in the state. And they do have satellite offices around the state as well that they reach out to. And then there's also others, you know, several others, including Kaiser Permanente and Straub, that they have specialized services. I haven't been personally to Queen's. I use Queen's here on island as a satellite. But if either of you have been to Queen's there on Oahu, you can pitch in. Fortunately, not I have had friends there, many friends. I, I did want to interject because I thought of it as you were talking. Uh, about, I think, nine years ago, Kaiser Permanente did offer a facility on Kauai. It's not totally urgent care, um, but it is connected to their system. And I know a lot of people, you know, people coming here from the mainland may use Kaiser Permanente and it is available. You do generally have to go over to Oahu to see someone. Yes. And the same thing here on Big Island is we have a Kaiser Permanente, but for anything uh, major, any surgeries or anything, they do have to travel over there to have it done at the Kaiser Clinic there. I've been to the Queens Medical Center. It was great. I mean, the service was great. It was really, really big. It really reminded me of a mainland hospital. I think when you drive to the Kona Hospital, it's surprising. At least for me, it was quite a shock seeing how small it was. It almost looked like a clinic like a mainland clinic, but it is a full hospital. So the Queens Medical Center to me looked the most, like what when I think of a hospital, that's what it looks like. Well, and we have to keep in mind that the Kona Hospital has been here for a hundred years and it was <laughs> the only medical facility on the west side of the island for a long time. So, and it has grown and gotten a lot better, but yeah, it does yes. look like, you know, kind of a, a regional type of a place, but it services our neighborhood very well. So that's yeah. great to know about um, the Queens and, you know, they do provide great service. 
So moving on, we can take a look at our next slide that again, talking about the neighbor islands and the limited access that we have to some specialists. We have the facilities, but like from Queens, I believe some specialists, they will come and see you. They'll only fly over like once a month. And that's, that's kind of a, a tough thing because otherwise you have, you do have to fly to Oahu for certain treatments for sure. And then the specialists, a specialist over on Oahu. I recently had a detached retina. My vision care person here on Big Island was like, you need to just go and be there. And he got on the phone with the specialist there for eye care. And I was there two days later. So specialists there on Oahu, they do have that. And I think uh, between the two of you guys, you've seen some specialists over there and maybe can tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I think here, I will say that we don't have an endocrinologist. Um, we don't have a rheumatologist. We don't have a gerontologist. We do have two great uh, heart doctors, but they don't have catheterization. And if you need heart surgery, you're definitely going to Queens or one of the other major hospitals. There's a number of them on Oahu with great practitioners. And I think for some specialties, even I don't even believe we currently have a periodontist. For the people that come, if you're going to fly over here from Oahu, of course, there's an expense with that. Even we lost one of our best optometrists at the beginning of the year. He died really suddenly. And a firm came over from Oahu, bought his clinic, and they fly people, they commute to work from Oahu. So there are people that do that. But I think that if you're choosing, and you know, some people think of Hawaii, especially if they live in the western part of the U.S., as a great place to retire. Sometimes they know where they want to go. Sometimes they're going to check it out and go around all the islands. Uh, you just need to be cognizant that in some areas, your options may be limited on your island or, you know, without going to the big city. Of course, if you're in the big city, you have to deal with things like traffic and other things like density that you won't get in the more rural islands. So it's really, it's really a balance. Hopefully, when you come to retire, you stay healthy and you stay healthy for a long time and you exercise and eat well. And you don't have to deal with any of these people. That's the best way to go for sure is maintaining that active lifestyle. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit. Um, Soraya, any um, two cents on all of this? Yeah, I've uh, we've seen lots of specialists. So my husband and I are going through the IVF treatment. And so oh. there is one facility in Kona that does offer that, but they can't do a lot of things. So for the last two years, I've been flying to Oahu almost weekly. And then at the height and peak of the cycle, it's typically three to four times a week. So I'm very familiar with seeing specialists and what's available. He actually, my husband had to see a specialist and it was very interesting to see that they're missing quite a few types of specialties. And so they had one person that comes who this particular specialist goes to every island and only does two days a week where he sees patients because with the traveling time, he doesn't want to work that long. So he only works two days a week, goes to each island. And so in order for my husband to see this particular person, he had to wait six months because the waiting list was just so long. And it's pretty typical for some people, right? When you want to see a specialist and they don't have that available, it really does take that long. I have Kaiser, so maybe that is part of it. I'm not quite sure if we were with a different provider like HMSA, if we could get you know locally more, more services than we do just on the big island with Kaiser. But so far I've been pretty happy with everyone that I've met. Um, I feel like they're pretty competent because I think that's something that sometimes people worry about with the fact that we have a lack of volume and choices. I do feel like the people who are here are very, very competent and I'm happy to put, you know, my faith in their hands and everything that they do. Wow. Well, good luck to you and your husband. We have, yeah. you know, very warm wishes Thank you. for Thanks. you that hopefully everything will work out. And by this time next year, we'll see a little something running around. That's exciting. <laughs> you know, good luck on hopefully. that. Yeah. And then I also want to, you touched on, you have Kaiser. Now, doesn't Kaiser for some things pay for airline tickets and transportation back and forth to their facility when you're on an off yes. island? Yes. I'm not quite sure what the exact rule is. I've been told different things from different 
uh, actual people that work there. So I've been told that it's once a year round trip from either you and your partner, whoever you may need for the surgery. So like, for example, I had to go through two surgeries last year. I had to, for one of them, I flew to Oahu. The other one, I stayed here and they paid for my husband's flight and they didn't pay for the hotel because that's a choice, but they do allow you to, they're kind of flexible with the dates. So for example, like I wanted to get there the day before because there seems to always be some type of travel issue when we have something like related to an operation. So I wanted to have the ease of mind of that and they allow you to do that. So you're able to be very flexible with your dates. But that's good um, so, yeah, but I'm having another flight paid for I believe in two weeks. So I'm not quite sure what the role is, if it's based on the service and the type of operation or what you're getting done, or if it's just one a year. Well, that's, I think, going to be a very important thing that when people are exploring the options of healthcare here to definitely reach out to the different providers and find out what the services are, what's included, what the premiums are, and that type of thing. Because it's very important, you know, when you do have to pay to to fly over and to stay over and you know the transportation and everything i think that's a really important uh factor to know about and of course it depends on how you know what you need done and how healthy you are and hopefully you never need to do it that's yeah. kind of kind of what's happening there <laughs> i think that there are certain areas of our health i'm thinking specifically of mental health it's not unusual, even if you're in a big city, if you want to see a heart specialist or, um, you know, orthopedic doctor, that you have to wait a while, you know, to get a, even just a regular visit. That's not unusual. But when you're in a situation where there's a very small amount of psychologists or psychiatrists, I had a situation recently with a client who just all of a sudden started having all this anxiety. And they were thinking, you know, maybe they needed to sell their property, go back to family. And I really wanted a helper in terms of sharing resources that are available. Well, no psychiatrist, you know, nobody's taking new patients. You call the kind of the major facilities, the different kind of parent companies, if you will, Hawaii Health, and there are a couple others in the state, and you can't get an appointment till November. That's difficult. You know, I, I think that's a situation and I don't know if that exists on every island. I, I think the bottom line, since we're still sitting on the con slide, is that it's not the most affordable place to live. It's a very expensive place to live. And when doctors come here, they're often compromising what they could earn in a big metro area in exchange for a lifestyle, a lifestyle to raise their kids and to have the quality of life that Hawaii uh, affords. And so therefore, sometimes doctors come and then they go. Uh, they realize that, you know, the equation isn't going to work. And so I think specifically in the mental health area, the community is aware of it. And there's always lots of efforts with the nonprofits to provide supporting services for people, you know, whether it's homeless people or people with mental challenges. And that's just where we are. Well, that's a that's a good topic to bring up. And, you know, speaking of that, and a lot of providers provide telehealth, which um, telemedicine is a great option because they do have services for mental health with your telehealth or just for regular general things. It's, it's a super good option because you can just be at home. You can be talking to somebody. You can, for an, a non-emergent care type of a thing, you need a refill of a prescription or something. Um, you feel like you have a cold or the flu. You can go on telehealth. You don't have to go out, expose your germs to other people or what have you. And then having, I believe there is, I was actually just ordered something and had a telemedicine earlier this week, and there was a mental health option on there. So I thought that was really good because, you know, sometimes you do just need to talk to somebody and having that there is, is a great thing if you have that. And then also being able to reach out to your community and finding out the options that are available to you there. Well, you could get lucky like me. Uh, I live in a duplex and my next door neighbor just moved here from San Diego he has a dual degree in primary care and psychiatry, and he's also a trained osteopath. 
So I like walking next door when I think something's <laughs> wrong. You could that's, get lucky, you know, just ask uh, when you're purchasing a home, are there any doctors in the neighborhood? <laughs> that's a good one, Ronnie, like that. <laughs> and, and just getting out and, you know, I think, you know, your mental health is so important. And I think part of that is being active and getting outside and doing active things that really helps um, overall um, as, as we're moving forward. I have a... Um... A client of mine who actually had a very specific issue that was a, I don't know how to say it correctly, but it, it's a, it's some type of gut issue. And so he kept his specialist that's in New York and did all of his treatment via telehealth. And his doctor ordered all of the lab tests and everything locally. And he could still get his medicine ordered through the local pharmacy as well. And so if you have somebody in particular that, you know, you really want to work with and that you have this built history with, he managed to figure out a way to do that and still get care from this person via telehealth, which was amazing. Wow, Soraya, that is good to know because there probably are a lot of people that that is you know, a, an issue for that they've worked with somebody on the mainland, they're thinking about moving here, but they have their regular person there and they want to continue to work with them. And that person has their history and being able to figure that out. That's great to know. That's great to know. So I want to kind of move into emergency services. If anything, you know, happens, what is available to us here in Hawaii, as far as an emergency services goes. On Oahu, obviously we've talked about Oahu and the specialists and the, the services they can provide there. However, on the outer islands, there are other things that happen that if we might have to fly to Oahu, we might have to be flown to Oahu. You know, if there if it's a health, a heart type of a thing and there's the certain close hospital can't handle it, you know, what happens then? Ronnie, do you have any um, insight on emergency travel from Kauai to Oahu in a situation like this? Well, it depends on the severity of the injury. Of course, we have, you know, accidents that happen. People get, have problems in the water. If it's really acute, they're going to be medevaced over to Oahu. And yeah. that'll happen pretty quickly. There was an issue just in the last six months where the contract for uh, the emergency, I think it's EMTs, was up for renewal. And it was put in the paper that so-and-so was getting the contract. And that company, I think Oahu-based, was going to have a narrower set of services of what they could offer when they got to the patient, say, up on the north side. And the community kind of was up in a roar. Uh, retired doctor from my Rotary Club of Hanalei Bay sent a letter to the governor and we raised a big huff and we were able to get that change back to the current carrier that offered superior services. So I know that was kind of a big thing for the North Shore community here. Uh, we have emergency service all over the island, uh, but again, you know, to get to the end of the road, Haena or Hanalei, from where most of the EMTs are, can be 45 minutes to an hour, and say a serious car crash or something, uh, that could be a problem. And also, you know, as it's noted here, is that we have uh, our local fire department helicopter services. So if something happens, if they're in a very remote area, if it is a situation that they need to be rescued right away. Helicopter services, they will fly into a remote place where a vehicle cannot get to. I personally had one happen. I was in the Kau area. I was got bucked off my horse. The helicopter came and had to, because I was a mile into pasture that no vehicle can get into. And the helicopter, you know, those guys know exactly what they're doing. The EMTs that run those helicopter rescues, they are very good at what they do. And they will get you to a provider ASAP because, and then the other thing too, right? We're in Hawaii. We have most islands, one road, two lanes. So <laughs> having an ambulance go through, and that's something else I think that's super important for folks that are moving here to understand is that one road, two lanes. So when you see an ambulance pull on the side, get out of the way, because it might be your mother, it might be your husband, it might be your best friend, it might be you someday that you don't want being held up in traffic. And I think that that's a really important thing for folks to learn when they move here. 
I, that's a good point. I didn't mention helicopter, but yeah, we have that in spades. And that is, especially if you're out in the Kalalau Trail, which is a you know big attraction on the North Shore and you really, you know, you can't get there by car. So helicopter definitely takes place. One thing I will say though, and maybe it's a little tangent from medical, is that this community on this island You know, when there's something that happens, like in 2018, we had this fantastic flooding. Half of the road up on the north side was out, and it was out for many, many months. Or we had a mudslide in Hanalei in 2019. The community organizations and nonprofits and Rotary Clubs, they spring into action in five minutes. You know, the government, the federal government, the county, they get their shit together, but not in five minutes, maybe five days if you're lucky. And, and I will say that, not that I'm inviting you to come here for an emergency, but if you do wind up spending more time in the islands and you happen to be there at a time when something catastrophic happens, I guess we'd have to put an asterisk on the Maui thing because we didn't do well there at all. But you'd be amazed, you know, at how the community comes together and springs into action. You know, when the mudslide happened, people started boating people so people could get to work, boating people to Hanalei, go through one of this, you know, Laird Hamilton or some famous surfer's property, multi-million dollar property, to then get to a bus that took them to a place where they could get into work. And it happened, you know, within eight hours of the mudslide. Yeah. Well, that's the beauty of Hawaii is the, is the community spirit. Soraya? I've never had to do an emergency helicopter or anything like that. I have a friend who unfortunately had a heart attack on a tennis court. And we called, you know, the emergency line and all that stuff. And they sent a helicopter right away. And so he was able to get flown to Queens to get proper care over there. He's fine now, no problem, still playing tennis. But it's one of those things you realize really quickly that you need help that will come on time and really like take care of you. And they did that. They did that with flying colors. They did amazing. And it was funny because when he got on the plane, on the helicopter, I'm sorry, he got, he was really scared about the cost. And the EMT could tell that he was really nervous about what was happening. And they stopped him and they said, hey, you're covered. It's only $25. You don't have to worry about a thing. This is not going to cost you an arm and a leg. You are covered. This is part of your services. And so he's really glad that this happened and he's playing very well. I think even better now. That's that's great. And it's good to know. And And I think that, you know, that because we're on an island, we are, you know, everybody a little bit different, but having those EMTs and the helicopters, that's saving grace in a lot of instances. So moving on after emergencies, we're going to talk a little bit about veteran care. Ronnie, you mentioned that on Kauai, there is a great veterans hospital and we do have one on Oahu that is great. I did not realize there was one on Kauai. Yeah, it's out on the west side and the west side is where we have the Pacific Missile Range. So we have a very, our biggest military presence and also the largest employer on the island. And so there's a lot of veterans out there and veterans will go from all over the island because of the spectacular, spectacular care that they can get there. So, yeah. Okay. That's good to know. And then, of course, Oahu has the VA hospital there, which is, you know, great. So that if, uh, you know, thinking about moving here and that is something that you need to uh, be aware of, Kauai and Oahu have the veterans hospitals. I'm not familiar with one here on Big Island um, or Maui. So, you know, that would be more interesting and more research to do to make sure that you're close by to a good VA medical facility if necessary. There's one in Hilo. Okay. Yeah. We I did not know that. VA hospital. Yeah, there's a VA hospital in Hilo area. And so people from the Kona area will drive over there in order to get care. Ah, thanks, Soraya. Didn't know that. That's a good tip. Right on. Okay, so um, moving on, and we were talking about how people here in Hawaii, we live a little longer um, because we have a very healthy lifestyle. We get out exercise. We have beautiful weather. It's just great. We are part of Blue Zones Project. There is, um, I believe, five to eight communities. I just kind of Googled it. and I believe there was eight communities um, in Hawaii that are registered with the Blue Zones Project. And that 
is basically going over and knowing that in these communities and overall in Hawaii, I think, is that we have healthier lifestyles because we are outside. And you can be outside because it's beautiful. I mean, there's no snow. <laughs> we don't, um, we have storms once in a while. We have rain, but it's warm. So, you know, kind of knowing that we have a higher life expectancy, we try to just not need to have medical care as often. My assistant, Chat GPT, has told me that uh, Kauai efforts in promoting blue zone living are constant, are active here too. So I'm not that familiar with the term, uh, but it says that uh, it's a focus on healthy living through plant-based diets, social engagement, physical activity, and environments that support well-being. And that all makes sense. I think being older than both of you and hearing lots of presentations about healthy aging, the social engagement is an incredible part of staying healthy and living a long time. Yes, definitely. Staying social, talking to people, <clears throat> listening, having conversations. And, uh, you know, I always, I always put it as, you know, you want to keep the pencil sharp. You know, you got to keep it sharp up here because the rest of your body will follow. Okay, so maintaining an active lifestyle year round, you know, as I mentioned, we've got, it's easy, right? We have great climate, we don't have rain, or we don't have snow, it's, it's great. Every, every year, every day, it's great. I personally get outside a lot. Soraya, you looks like you do a lot outside. Maybe <laughs> you can tell me about how you maintain your active lifestyle. Sure. To me, Hawaii is a playground. That's really what it is. I have the best time coming from a place that's very, that used to be very gray, like Houston, Texas. And I used to work in oil. So I was around, you know, refining plants, stacks, all that good stuff. So gray skies was what I used to see a lot. So when I came to Hawaii, I was really looking forward to being in nature, doing a lot of outdoor activities all the time. And so you can see it's me and my little dog. We walk every day on the ocean. I think so I really understand why this Blue Zone project is in effect and why people live longer in Hawaii because it's so nice all the time. And the amenities that are available locally really drive towards a lifestyle where you are outdoors all the time, right? So in Houston, I think of activities that people typically do, which is shopping, being in malls, closed areas with ACs, things of that nature. And so when I see Hawaii, I think of, you know, outdoor dining, walking outside, being snorkeling, cycling, all that good stuff and hiking. So I can see how that makes sense. All the numbers that you've shared earlier. Yeah. And I think Hawaii, you know, be, I think all islands, yeah. hiking, yeah. Uh, water sports, you know, everything like that is so accessible to us and so easy to get to for us. It's kind of almost um, a lot of people do go to gyms and on Oahu, there is more availability because Oahu is going to be more the city type of a place, you know, like where you're talking about Houston and, and that area, it's going to be more city. So you go to a gym or what have you. But when you're on an outer island, it's just go get them, go get them. And Ronnie, yeah. who's your friend? This is Ipo. This means princess in Hawaiian. So Kauai has the only multi-use. Oh, don't touch my microphone. <laughs> has the only multi-use path in the state. It's called Ke Alahele Makalae, means the path by the sea. When it's finished, it will be 17 miles going from the airport all the way up to what's called Donkey Beach. Okay, that's enough for you. <laughs> She's not really allowed. Thank dog. you for sharing but, her with us, though. But we, we often walk the path in the morning. Uh, so multi-use, people walk their animals, people ride bikes. Because people can bike into work, it's considered a uh, mode of transportation. And so the bulk of the funds that help build it in phases comes from the federal government, matched by a small amount by the county. But it's really a treasure of the east side. Like throughout Hawaii and I think the entire country of the United States and who knows, maybe around the world, we have lots of pickleball. Pickleball came here in 2015 and you can find it in county recreational centers. There's mostly we can play outdoors. 
And it's an interesting contrast because that's one thing you can do in Hawaii, right? You can play sports all year long. When I go up where I have an affiliate team in Spokane, Washington, it's a huge community. The courts are unbelievable and in good quality, but there's also six months of winter. So when the winter comes, you know, your options are limited and they're expensive. We've also got nine golf courses and um, golf is, of course, something you can do all year long and not to forget the water, which I think all of our islands have. But you may not know, Kauai has 63 white sandy beaches. And I've always marveled at the what we call the coconut wireless of all the surfers. They know by sunrise where it's going off, where they can kite, where they can surf. You get surf reports on the radio throughout the day. And I think that's, you know, I don't know, I don't know what more you could want in an environment to be active than, than what's here where I live. I 100%, you know, Hawaii, we're just so very, very fortunate. And that's interesting, 63 white sandy beaches there in Kauai, whereas here on Big Island, we probably have maybe six. <laughs> that's not a that's not a fact i don't know for sure but we don't have that many um but yours is such an older island that ourselves that we're still getting there um uh, but thank you for sharing that because all the way around i think just getting out and having an active lifestyle soraya you get out with your dog i get out with my dogs every morning and walk a couple miles it's super important i also play tennis um three to four times a week I get out there and um, just, you know, it's great exercise. There's a lot of pickleball here on Big Island as well. Like you mentioned, Ronnie, I mean, there's there's more pickleball than there is tennis. Um, so we go out there and we're like the only ones playing tennis, but there's, you know, another 50, 75 people out playing pickleball, you know. Yeah, so. well, I, I remember in 2016, uh, you know, about six months after the pickleball ambassador came to the island, going to my regular Sunday doubles group and telling them all about it. And, you know, that is not a sport. What is your problem? You know, <laughs> don't, don't bother us, you know. And now half of them haven't played tennis in five years because they're like playing pickleball seven days a week. So yes, it's a very yes. addictive game. Tennis is a great game too. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. So They're just very different games. You know, there's yeah. a lot of a lot of finesse in pickleball. You got a very light ball and a very small paddle and you don't have much room to do anything with tennis. You got a very heavy ball and you got a big racket and you really have to smash the ball to give it some velocity. So different mm -hmm. dynamics, similar concepts. Of course, people that play tennis naturally gravitate to pickleball. Anyone that's played a racket sport, right? Uh, handball, racquetball, ping pong. So tennis, yeah. pickleball, all great. It's they're all good. How are just, the how are the courts? You know, what's the state of the public in the public parks? Are the courts in good shape? Are they new? Do they have lots of cracks? They just resurfaced them. So the one that's in Kona, that's uh, the public park by the Natarium, I believe they resurfaced it during COVID. So it's beautiful. It's in really really good shape. I typically play play at the Royal Kona, which is the the hotel, that's one of the hotels that's downtown. It's very inexpensive to be part of the membership year long, but if you're looking to just drop in for the day, they have a lot of social play and that's typically 10 to $15, I believe, if you're sponsored with a member or not. And it's a great way to meet people. We actually have one of the organizers who has a farm. So when you go play, he will have the table filled with all the harvest from his farm and it's free. It's just for sharing. It's just aloha. And so I definitely come back with a pineapple, a couple avocados, and it's just really, really fun. Yeah. And that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful court. And I personally play down at Holua, which is in Keho. And, um, you know, I, I like it down there. I played down there for years. And it's interesting, you know, when you were mentioning the costs and everything, because I talk to people that come here to visit and they say that their yearly membership at a club on the mainland is like thousands of dollars. Whereas at Holua, it's like 500 to 700 for the year. So, you know, cost wise, yes, it's expensive, but it's not as expensive as some other places. So my other thing that I like to do is I have horses and I get out and I go riding and I just love to do that. It's not only exercise for uh, me, it's exercise for them. That's kind of active lifestyle. And Soraya, you know, when you were bringing up as far as the, 
bounty of the gardens. Again, that goes back to our healthy lifestyle, the food that we eat, the pineapples, the fruit, the veggies, everything like that. And also the social aspect, as Ronnie was mentioning earlier, you have to stay social. So getting out and doing these events and having fun and doing sports, it keeps everything flowing so that you have that healthier lifestyle. So we're just about to wrap it up. Maybe I can just get some closing thoughts from Soraya first on um, their your thoughts about um, the lifestyle and healthy living here in Hawaii. I think stress is the silent killer a lot of times. It's one of those things that living in a big city, I don't miss at all. The stress of driving on the highway, the stress of getting places on the right time. And one of the reasons why I really enjoy living in Hawaii is because it's very stress free. I get to be in nature all the time, which is what I really was looking forward to moving here. And although we do have some facilities here for basic care, if you need a certain type of specialist, you can always find them, whether it's flying wherever or going to the mainland. I do have clients who have two types of coverages. And so they'll get one physician in Hawaii and then another one in another state. So overall, I'd say I'm very happy with it. But if you have anything that's very particular, you do need to plan for that before moving here. Awesome. Thanks for that. And Ronnie, uh, the closing thoughts? If you go on Google or chat GPT or perplexity or Gemini, the artificial intelligent assistant of your choice, and you search for happiest place to live in America, healthiest place to live in America. You won't be surprised when you see that Hawaii is sitting on the top of the list. So it, despite our maybe limitations, you could say on the medical front that we covered today, you have an opportunity to be in a place with clean air. I'm talking about Kauai now, not Oahu. Uh, clean air magnificent beauty all around from rainbows, uh, so many mountain ranges, all the beaches. When you go to a farmer's market, and we have them seven days a week here, you won't see the little Haas avocados that you see throughout the mainland. <laughs> I mean, when you go to see a recipe for guacamole and it says, use two avocados, you got to use like a quarter of a Hawaii avocado. <laughs> I got these avocados outside of my tree. They're like little, I call them bowling balls. And there's about 30 to 40 varieties of them. They fruit all year long. And what I'm saying is, despite the cost, you can go to farmer's market, get produce that's organic, that's fantastically affordable relative to the supermarket. So you got healthy eating, healthy lifestyle, healthy sunshine, vitamin D. No wonder people are healthy. And maybe that's why we don't have a lot of medical resources. We don't need them. <laughs> 